This episode is brought to you by FanRoll, your source for premium gaming dice. Get 10% off dice and dice accessories at fanrolldice.com with our code TRIALS10. They have a huge selection of metal, resin, and even a couple of other novelty dice. Uh, so go check that out uh, and get 10% off your order with code TRIALS10. Everybody and welcome to episode 218 of Trials and Trebuchets. I am your dungeon master, Luke, and joining me are my players. The first one's name is this. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Ben, and I play the level <laughs> two point fighter, Bulero, who's currently <laughs> taking a nice long nap. <laughs> You missed the part in your intro where you're like, and their name, <laughs> my players' I thought you'd names pick are. Up. You left me out to dry like a piece of cloth on a line. There's no segue. Hello, it's me, Carla, and I play the 11 T, 11, the level 11 Tiefling Rogue Lock, Rocky Bobo. <laughs> Rocky? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> no, because I'm turning into a rock, but no, it's not Rocky Boboa. It's me, Integrity Addleberry, the, the orange Tiefling, Ugh, whatever. <laughs> I mean, you're not orange right now. Mira oh, looks like integrity. Mira. Integrity looks like Mira. I'm sorry, I'm Mira. Mira turning into a rock. Oh, no. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sarah, and I play the level 11 half elf bard Mira Marchand, who looks like the level 11 tiefling <laughs> roguelock Integrity Ida Larry. Um, and in the heart <laughs> of an angel. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sam, and I play the level 11 human sorceress Sarah Ness Sitterman, who looks like level 11 human sorceress Sarah Ness Sitterman. Wow, who's this person in front of us? That's scary. Wowzers. Wowzers. And last time on Trials and Trebuchets, this is a big one, so strap in, folks. The gamblers watched their enchanted night burn bright through an icy door before melting into a puddle of molten metal. Inside Galvan's office and locked out of his trophy room, they triggered every trap they could find within <laughs> his desk, resulting in booze fainting, the release of blood-sucking parasites, the long death of petrification taking root in Integrity's idol. Berry's hand, and Mira gaining a coin, a hammer, and a divine chisel. Leveraging their newfound mason's tools, the conscious trio broke through into the trophy room and opted to free the most likely to be Diana, architect of duplicity, who upon release sprouted luminous horns and wings and took aim to steal the chisel from our wonderful Mira Marchand moonlighting as Integrity <laughs> Idleberry's hands. This is the scene we see before us. We're in a freezing cold room. It's like a, 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 a little cone pointing outwards. At the very back end, there's encased in ice this large uh, floor-to-ceiling tablet of black stone, uh, things engraved upon it that were not looked upon in the previous times. Uh, in the walls, frozen like woolly mammoths, as previously alluded to, are myriad forms of humanoids and non-humanoids alike. Uh, little trophies, Mr. Galvan, godless Galvan, has stuck here uh, for his wonderful viewing pleasure and whatever else he does with these things. In the middle of the room, uh, just freed from a giant chunk of ice, there is a very long-limbed humanoid woman. Uh, she has deep brown skin. She has glowing white eyes. Uh, this ble not bleached in the sense of like how we would actually bleach something, but bleached I mean like driftwood colored. Uh, this white hair uh, flowing down. Uh, from her forehead sprout two uh, horns uh, visibly identical to those of Integrity Idleberries. These long, straight, uh, maybe foot tall, luminous white horns. Uh, they almost have like, a, uh, they're, they're, they are white, pure light, and from them emanates like an almost uh, yellowy, nice uh, tungsten glow. Uh, and from her back, wings sprout uh, luminous once more uh, through her uh, clerical clothing, that of the god Rel you had dis discerned in the last episode. M Integrity Idleberry, you are wielding a hammer, which is 
uh, partially broken on one end. It is made of a white and black stone. Uh, Serenup Cinderman, you are standing off in the corner of the room, maybe standing in front of Boo's unconscious heap of a form, uh, <laughs> pink and uh, cold <laughs> on the ground. And Mira Marchand, you are standing uh, wrestling at this point with this woman who you have just freed. She is trying to grasp from your hand that uh, divine chisel which you wield. Uh, she is saying nothing. There is just like the kind of like a ragged breath as the two of you wrestle for control of this thing. Um, Mira, do you want to try to hold on to it or are you going to let her have it? No, I'm going to hold on to it and I'm going to be like, wait, please, uh, we don't need to fight. A uh, horse just wants to see you. We want to get you away from the the fiend of whimsy. Um, Look, we're, we're here to help. As you say these things, she starts to like yell over top of your voice and says, I will not believe you. I will not believe a word you say, Galvan. You liar in this form. Uh, I can need you to make an athletics check as she still tries to rip this yes. chisel out of your hands. I realized that my d20 is still on the table from <laughs> d20. Oh my god. Just use um, telekinesis to roll the dice from that table over to you and then... <laughs> When I say I she's scurried, that. folks. Uh, Literally yes. <laughs> scurried. Uh, athletics, please, and thank you. Uh, 18 plus 5, 23. Ooh. Positively. Uh, what does it look like as you wrestle this, uh, as you, like, pull this chisel away and maybe, like, push her back? What does that take the image of, Mira? Um... I like to imagine that, so Mira is disguised as Integrity. Mm -hmm. Integrity is disguised as Mira. Integrity is like half a foot shorter than Mira. So I kind of imagine that Mira is like taking advantage of this because like the top of her yes. head isn't actually where yes. uh, Diana thinks it is. And so I think she's like just taking advantage of the fact that Diana isn't quite reaching in the mm -hmm. right places to just sidestep away Absolutely. and hold it kind of uh, behind my you back. kind of like uh, stand up from where she had tried to like push you onto the ground, uh, pull this chisel out of her hands. Her, her grip is extremely weak you can see like her hands are long and sinewy but there does not seem to be much muscle or anything uh, these very thin wrists hidden behind these wide sleeves uh, you kind of pull up and away from her uh, breaking out of her like uh, attempt to just grapple you uh, and she kind of just remains heaped on the ground surrounded by shards of ice Mira you take a couple of like decided steps backwards put this chisel hiding it behind your back and she is just looking between the three of you now her eyes gleaming glowing she's looking for like a like an animal trapped uh, and uh -huh. she is just panting deeply and she um, now that she's not moving or anything and, and she's not, also not stuck in a block of ice, you can see on her skin there's just numerous scars, uh, what looks like cuts or uh, slashes in the skin where it has healed back. Um, and she, even on like the her knuckles as she sits on the ground, you can see, and maybe even up onto the wrists underneath the robe. Um, but she stands here, or sits here in this like pile almost regarding all of you, um, waiting to see what your next move is. Um, integrity is going to integrity who is Mira is going to put her hands up like okay. in surrender okay. and look she's me I'm her but one thing that we are not is who you think we are I swear make a persuasion check integrity idleberry I knew um, you was me how <laughs> does a 14 sound like a 14 <laughs> sounds like she spits at you uh, mm. It like lands at your foot and she goes, I know lies when you speak them, you damnable devil. Look, what can we do to convince you that we're telling the truth? Give we, me we my chisel now. It is my relic by birthright. Hand it over to me. If you are Please who you say you are, us. give it to me. Hmm. Integrity still has the hammer, right? Correct. Hmm. I wonder if only giving her one thing would help a little without entirely like giving her the tools to hurt us. I think Mira might at least consider this and she might be like, okay, but please just tell me, I want to give this to you, but we really want to take you back to Seahorse. Can you tell me that if I give this to you, you aren't just going to, I don't know, fly away? Make an insight check for me first. Yeah. All of you can make this. Okay. Um, not very you, insightful. Uh, <laughs> that's a total of nine, which is a five plus total four. Total of nine? You see fear flicker across her face. Yeah. Nothing more. Yeah. I have a 17. 17. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, that is a 
16. 16 and 17 are adequate to see this. Uh, Boo, you can see nothing. You are having a sweet, <laughs> sweet poisonous dream. Uh, Mira, fear flashes across her face very quickly. A, a wealth of expression or emotion that you can't decipher in this moment. The adrenaline still pumping from her wrestling, wrestling with you. Serenup and Integrity a bit more take a back from the, uh, a step back from this situation, not actually uh, the adrenaline directly pumping right now. You can both see that the moments uh, that she hears uh, Mira say horse this time. Uh, she had not heard you the first time as she was yelling over top of you. Uh, this like flicker of like almost pain, almost um, recognition of uh, of like confusion goes across her face in just an instant. Uh, and then it returns to like a very fearful posture. She might almost be pushing herself back towards like the back wall so that she has something behind her so that the three of you can't get around her. Um, mm. Mira Marchand, she will say, you're lying. You're lying to me. Please, I will give this to you. Horst. Just please, come with us to see Horst, please. Horst is dead. You. What? No. Galvan, we... Galvan, you can't lie to me. I can see through this. Horst is dead. She's dead. You can't. Just, just finish whatever you're going to do and put me back in the ice. Hang on. Because here, I feel like Mira's thought would either be, okay, she could be wrong here. She could just, like, be mm -hmm. wrong and this could be a trick. Or what if the horse who gave us the job is, like, Galvan doing another trick, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I'm inclined to think it's not that because we um, asked we asked the chain about Winsler. But I will be like, L can you tell me more about that, please? Look, no, if, if anybody here wanted to attack you, we would have done it already. So can we just talk? We've done this before, Galvan. You uh, disguising yourself as others coming here. <sighs> she seems to be like almost, uh, her, her breath is getting short as she seems to be like getting quite worked up. You can all tell that much. She goes, yeah, questioning me, interrogating me. I won't tell you anything more. If you aren't mm -hmm. truly him, hand me back my chisel now. I think I'm going to like bend down and give her the chisel. Uh, do you want to like put it on the ground and slide it over to her? I or think I'm going to try to hand it to her. her. Like go up okay. there and try to like hold you it out like a peace offering. You walk forwards holding it out. A handle first, I presume. Yeah. And the moment you get within like four feet of her, she like lunges out and snatches it from your hands. Um, and she wields it for a second and watches you. And you can see Mira, she is like waiting for you to move an inch in like a, a violent manner. Right, mm -hmm. and I presume you don't do that. No, no. Okay. Do you just want to back up, or are you going to stand your ground here? I'm going to. I'm going to back up, but I also want to make sure that there isn't like a route for her to leave. Like I'm still going mm -hmm. to stay kind of interposing absolutely. between the exit because uh, we still need to. Absolutely, this is a small room, and you, Integrity, and Serenap. There might only be like two feet between each one of you. Mm -hmm. uh, like one on the left, Integrity, you can be on the left, and uh, Serenap, you can be on the right, and Mira just in the dead middle. Like, like, if she was to try to run from you, like, she seems to be a tall or a large woman, but she could not easily get through you guys without you being able to, like, tackle her. Very simply. Um, but Mira, you hand her this. She holds it. You can see her hands shaking a little bit, and she kind of, like, holds it in, in it, both of them to her, like, stomach um, as far away from you as she really can. And she, like, meets your eyes and will say in, like, a bit of a calm voice but still very visibly, like, shaking. Why Why did you come here? Who are you? How did you... How did you get through here? How did you know I was here? This isn't a trick, right? It, it, it's not a trick. We were really sent here by Horst to get you. Or at least who we think is Horst. I mean, I don't... Horst is dead. What, what? She died many years ago. The same night I was taken. My sister died. She's dead... Horst is your sister? Of a kind, yes. Well, You're... so if I'm going to cast message. Ooh, okay. To, is it possible to <laughs> to do this? And like, um, I don't know. I don't think so, no. But yes, what do you want to say? I just want you to say. You can twin spell message, right? You can twin spell message. I don't know if Serenaf has twin spell message. Oh. I don't. You have like elemental change and no, I don't spell. I have empowered yeah. spell. I don't really know how that's going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, More words. Okay, I'm going to, I guess, speak to Mira because uh, Mira is the one who is actually like speaking to her okay. mostly. By all means. I'm going to say um, either 
Like, do we have anything on us that would prove that we came from... From Horst. Yeah, that we came from Horst. Like, because I? I don't think I have anything. I don't think she gave me anything. But uh, what we could do is, like, be like, okay, um... Well, whoever we saw was calling herself Horst. She told us all this stuff about how she was an angel and she was the only one, um, the only one left who still, um, you know, worshipped the old gods, uh, the old god. I don't, I mean, I guess I can say it, but I'm still hesitant. Um, she said that you were the architect who designed this place and that, uh, she wanted you back. We were in this, uh, she, she has a whole area. Why? This, why does this impersonator want me? How sure are you that the impersonation didn't happen earlier than you thought it did? Maybe I wasn't there, but maybe the killing, I don't know. Are you positive that this couldn't be her? She starts to turn her head, but is almost like hesitant to look away from the three of you. Um, what's the, uh, like, what's your guys' expressions in this, right? Like, are you trying to be kind of like uh, kind expression or are you, uh, walk me through what she would see as she looks at three strangers. Mira's trying to be like disarming here and make a connection mm -hmm. because okay. while I suppose there is a possibility that we might have to resort to violence, I think it's a much better possibility that we don't. And so she's trying to like get on the level basically. Okay. She might even be like not fully crouched down, but like trying to be a little bit more eye to eye to Diana. Absolutely. Um, Integrity still has like an un, um, unfighting stance, like still... Mm -hmm. I'm not here to fight you. My hands are up. Like okay. my hands are, well, my hand has the hammer, but I'm not necessarily like trying to hide it or try to hit it, hit, yeah. her, uh, hit her with it. Absolutely. <laughs> um, But just like a puzzled look, like trying mm -hmm. to calculate like what, like what's happening Figure out here. what is going on here. Like yeah. someone's saying that this person's dead, but we literally just saw them a few hours okay. ago. Um, and as for you, Saren up the Cinderman? Um... I'm keeping my posture as relaxed as possible. Just okay. and my, I'm keeping my expression open to listening because if we okay. are like, "Hey, this isn't real. This, that isn't right," because we, yeah, then it's going to be. So I'm like, I'm open okay. to listening, perfect, not perfect, 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 dangerous. So the three of you, with kind of amicable or at least like open uh, expressions, postures, and with a combined insight role. Uh, she hesitates for a moment to look away from the three of you, uh, but then after probably three seconds of like hanging on that, she does turn her head and looks at this large tablet, stone tablet in the encased in the ice behind her. It is this uh, pitch black stone inscribed upon it are very small uh, runes. Uh, the three of you could make uh, arcana or investigation checks for me if you would Ooh. like. Yes, or Connor also investigation. Examined. Yeah, uh, she on, seems. Uh, I guess it could be either skill because the modifier is the same. But yeah. let's do investigation. It's a non-natural okay. twenty. Sixteen plus four. Okay, I got um eighteen In... for either one because like okay. I also okay. got a non-natural twenty for Arcana. Okay, fourteen Perfect. plus six. Integrity. What did you want to do? Investigation or Arcana? Uh, let's do investigation. Okay, so two investigations and one arcana in that case. In integrity and Mira, what you can decipher as y you can look at this large tablet behind her as she also regards it. You, The two of you very easily notice that there seems to be multiple, almost like fragments of what looks like words, like paragraphs or little uh, couplets that would go together. Um, there seems to be like eight, nine, maybe 12 of them uh, along, like from the top to the bottom. Um all except two of those to your guys' uh, eyes are like almost scratched out, undecipherable. Um, and Serenap Sinderman, uh, you also notice a similar thing, but what uh, catches your eyes is that the two uh, sets of like glyphs or runes writing that are still intact have this very faint yellowish glow to them. It's almost giving off a uh, radiance that you can uh, pick up. You feel this like radiant magic uh, emanating from this tablet. Diana turns her head slowly and will regard this tablet. She looks at it for probably 30 seconds in silence. Uh, it, from where you're standing, you probably see that her mouth opens in like what seems to be a little bit of shock as she uh, regards it. Um, and the three of you could read it if you really wanted to, uh, or you could just 
continue your questioning of her or conversation with her. Um, Is it skimmable? It's definitely skimmable. It seems to be like a couple of baby little couplets. Um, Very near the top. Uh, It seems to be not the first couplet or something, but the second. It reads in, for you, Mira, it reads in Elvish. And for Integrity and uh, Serenaph, if you wanted to look at it, you can both read it in common. Uh, But nonetheless, it reads in the same way. Uh, A humble creature I pledge to be. Mine chisel and hammer shall shatter stone. Never a hand shall raise against thee, else I give my soul to the pyre to atone. Can you slow that down and write it somewhere? (laughs) No, it's fine. (laughs) No, no, no. No, no, no. I'll slow it down. (laughs) Let's go with legibility. (laughs) A humble creature I pledge to be. Okay. Mine chisel and hammer shall shatter stone. Okay. Never a hand shall raise against thee. Okay. Else I give my soul to the pyre to atone. What does that mean? Fascinating. That seems to be like the second couplet. The first one is completely like almost hmm. scratched out, completely uh, serenaf- lacking any radiance from it, um, illegible to your guys' eyes. Uh, it seems to be the other one that Diana is staring at, almost in shock, uh, a bit of a, like you can hear her breathing. <sighs> it's slowed at this point and she's almost like shaking her head and she goes, she still lives. You're... You 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 speak true. And she almost like puts a hand up to it and rubs across on these words. Uh, the three of you can read here, lower down, probably like the eighth one, if each cup uh, the eighth couplet. I shall care for the dead, dwelling here and lending strength to ease their passing. None living shall know fear while I keep my head, whether beggar or whether king. Is hmm. is this your oath to um, it's like horse stove. Horse or to the lamp. And she'll stand a bit. You see her legs kind of shake a little bit. Uh, she seems like the muscle seems to have atrophied horribly as she's been in ice. Uh, she stands very shakily and will raise a hand up to the second couple. And she go, these, these were the words I spoke to my God. Yes. And <sighs> I need a moment. I'm, I apologize. It's, it's I, okay. I but thought D- her dead. Diana, if you come with us... Uh, I have a spell that can tell us definitively if someone is who they say they are or not. I've used it before. It's it's helped us in a pinch. If you who else could she be other than her? This tells it true that she lives. None would dare take her form. I swear. Then please come with us. Um, Why didn't she save me before? And she turns almost to look at the three of you now. There's a very pained expression on her face. Um, I'm. Why did she wait so long? I'm, did she not know where I was? She probably couldn't. I mean, a lot of stuff has been happening here. There have been a lot of attempts at a lot of different things and we were the first to succeed in something and that brought us to horse detention. I think there were attempts but no one had been successful until... We got until we finally were able to get to you. Boo Bolero. <coughs> you all hear a coughing come from behind you where Boo's body was dumped as integrity yeah, right behind you guys. Picked up and thrown to the side. <laughs> He's lying in the recovery position, perfectly so. Uh, but you hear a coughing. Uh, you see this like kind of black uh, soot uh, beckle out from his lips onto the ground itself as he coughs up the remnants of whatever poison. Boo, your eyes regain a clarity and focus, uh, and you see before you these three uh, young schmucks talking (laughs) to a very atrophied, um, very clerically dressed uh, woman. Uh, Deep brown skin, white hair, glowing horns and wings. (laughs) So, I see we all found who we were looking for. (coughs) Oh, God. Is he ill? We all sort of are. Um, hey, is there any chance? I don't know if you have this kind of power, but is there any chance you can help my friend? Her hand's kind of turning to stone. And I put my hand up. Mm. But I, please I remember, don't I chisel believe... it away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you? She does not move whatsoever, but she does look at you. Very, uh, like, eyes. Um, uh, just shy of a glare, almost. Um, she does shoot your hand a look, Integrity. I believe you had bandaged it up a little bit. Do you want to, like, peel those back to show, uh, the small amount of petrification which has taken root? Um, yes, I would like to, um, strip my hand off. 
pull some bandages off your hand. You all see her hand seems to be probably piecemeal, not altogether, but about 50% stone at this point. The fingertips of your pinky and ring finger up to like the second knuckle, uh, and then the entire back of your palm, and then some like little speckles along the the uh, remaining fingers and palm. And then there's some more like venation going up towards your forearm. Can you Can you help me? It's getting worse, and my hand is my... My hand is my greatest tool. I don't want to lose it. Please. I've just met you. I don't mean to insult, but I've not known any who stand in this room to be fully deserving of my trust. If if we get you back to Horst, though, if we get you out of here, get you back to Horst, would, would you help her? Please. She breathes in deeply, and you can all see this kind of more angered expression cross over her face, and she will say, I will make a deal. The man who kept me here and tortured me, these, and she almost makes a snarl, the hundreds of years, the one they call Galvan. If you help me kill this man, I will help your hand. I will heal it to the best of what I can. Though little of my magic remains in this godforsaken plane, Rel has long abandoned this place. Finally, someone who seems to have their head on their shoulders for once in this place. I, I, um, okay. But we'll have to find him. Like, as you said, that he is a master of taking forms. We have not seen him since we've been in this, uh, we've been in this domain. Then we kill any devil we see until we find him. We'll kill him. I want to kill him. Okay. We'll help. Fair enough. Um, before, before we he- head out, are we just like going to go out there and start killing? Maybe we should get you to Horst first and then recuperate a little and come back. You look like you've, no pun intended, been through hell and we kind of have too. Maybe we get to Horst and then, I don't know, Integrity doesn't have a lot of time, but also, we're all pretty fucked up. Maybe we can at least get some healing. (coughs) Boo, on the ground. Is the essence of life what keeps you from helping me? That alone? Her hand doesn't have time to run around on errands. My deal is not to go to my sister and find out what is happening. My deal is help me kill my captor, and any other devil we find on our way is the essence of life all that keeps you from helping me more. Essence of life and and time. We have someone that we care for, that we are looking for, and there is a chance that if we do not find him and free him first, us letting you, like you killing Galvant might make him disappear a like frustrated look goes across her face and uh, her shaking legs do give out now and she kind of slides back down to the ground her back along this icy wall and she will say so an impasse you're looking for someone and cannot help me kill this wretch and i refuse to go with you until it's done no i don't think we said we won't help you yeah we can help you said We can help you, but first we need to secure our friend. I don't know where he could be. Like, he could be in this room. Um, And I look around. Yeah, you can Um, look around. Um, You see many tiny people, uh, short folk. A lot of halflings is what you see. Um, You see, you know those, like, school photos where some people stand on, like, the bench, and then some people sit on the bench, and then some people stand Mm -hmm. on the ground? A school photo. Teacher stands on either side. There's like probably 30 halflings making up one of these such composite images Jesus. posed in a way. Um, they are a Weird. variety of ages, a variety of looks. Every single one of them unmistakably very halfling and a very strong family resemblance uh, amongst the lot of them. Wild. Hmm. Uh, you see no gnomes in this room, though. Well, he's not here. I'm going to because like she's sort of slid down to the ground again. And given how injured and probably cold she is i'm going to kind of kind of go with that because that one part of the original plan where i take off my Mm -hmm. my cape my cloak thing okay i'm going to kind of step forward not get too close to like startle but like hold it out to her 
she reaches out and snatches it from you, uh, pulling it around her shoulders very quickly. Uh, it's a quite large, uh, it was made of a curtain, so it's quite uh, <laughs> large flowing on you, Serenap, whereas her, she probably stands uh, about two feet taller than you. Um, it seems to be just so fitting, uh, like a person with a blanket wrapped around their shoulders. Mm. She sits here, still staring at you all, and says, If your friend is in this place, kept by that devil, then I don't know what to say to convince you. Will killing him free our friend? I mean, that seemed to be how it was with Avarice. She looks at you with a just blank stare when you say that. I, I'm going to turn to my friends and be like, guys, when we killed the Fiend of Avarice, everybody who was on his chain was freed, at least at least some of them, hopefully mm-hmm. permanently. If if we go along with her plan and, you know, kill Galvin right away, that might free Winsler. I, I understand that, but we don't know if he's on that chain or if he was... If he's in the same situation as those locked mm-hmm. up ones that got that just mm-hmm. basically went off into the afterlife completely, like yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like we don't know what his situation yeah. is. Once we know, then I don't think we have time to sit around and wonder. Though I think integrity is turning to stone. Like we aren't going to be able to sit here and talk forever. I mean, if we wait around long enough, for all we know, the fiend is just going to come back. Like. I just don't think we should be wasting our time. We all came here to kill Galvan, and now we're suddenly deciding that we're not going to kill Galvan, so... Unfortunately, you're right. Okay, so the plan is that we just just take a chance? When Boo, when you say that, a very weak smile crosses onto her face, uh, enjoyed, impassioned by the fact that one of you is determined at the very yeah. least. <laughs> okay, so... Mira I took up. so much poisonous gas... To the face, and now we're all of a sudden deciding. Oh, we need to, we need to recuperate and go somewhere else. All I'm that time to get hate here. Hate that you're right, Boo. <laughs> what? Do you need healing? What does it look like? I could Fine. use something. <laughs> okay. And uh, Mira is going to go over to Boo, and uh, she's going to like, and, and and this does leave like an open gap, like okay. technically, if she's walking over <laughs> to Boo for Diana. No, uh, I doubt she's gonna run now and just be like, all right. And uh, she's going to, like, just touch him on the shoulder and try to uh, imbue some life in Boo as she casts uh, Cure Wounds at third level. I would also also like to face Deanna while this is happening. And I'm like, you make it sound like it's so easy to give life because you're asking us, is is life the only thing that's keeping us from helping you fight or kill uh, the fiend of Whimsy? Is there a way that you can help us as well? Life is all I have left to give, the essence of it. Uh, Boo, I rolled three sixes uh, plus five. You recover uh, 23 hit points. Thank you. Okay. If you are in need, I'm sure I could sacrifice some of my connection to the god Rel to help your mortal body. But would that impact your ability to cast the final hit to kill Galavant? She looks at you. I'm altogether uncertain, but I'm sure my fury alone can fuel me. So, we're just going to go out there. We're going to kill all the devils that we see, the imps, and hope that Winsler was in the right standing to not disappear when everyone gets freed. I like those odds. I like the part where we kill the devils. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to be honest. I don't think a lot of these imps are going to want to die. I think we go in there, we're like, hey, we're here for Galvan, like, you can leave. These imps don't, I don't know, I mean, these are the same ones who are gleefully talking about torturing people in the break room. I think enough of them are, and I mean this in the best way possible, cowards. I don't think we're going to have to just kill a bunch of people. I think that when it comes down to it, Galvan's going to reveal himself. Especially if we have one of his prized possessions. Yeah. I, I have a feeling that getting her back is going to be more important to him than fleeing. At the at the when I hear prize possessions, prize possessions. I'm going to you check like, your quickly pocket. check my pocket. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Boo, you check your pockets. One thing that is there is a wonderful lump of what feels like steel that you've been carrying around this entire time. It's the little lump that you got uh, uh, yes. back in Dry Falls. Uh, you check your other pockets. There's some tokens. There's some chips. Uh, but there is distinctly missing a 25 pound. Fat little puzzle coin. I seem to be I... missing something. It was in my pocket before I fell unconscious and fainted. 
Any of you know where that could have gone? Oh, the coin? Yeah, those things that bit us carried it away. Ooh. Um, Mira Marchand, make a deception check. And yeah. Google Arrow, make a insight roll. Uh, mm-hmm. that is a total of, uh, 19. 11 plus 9. Or, wait, sorry, 20. I'm bad at math. How am I gonna <laughs> fucking beat that? <laughs> I believe you can beat that. Do I it. don't think I can beat that. I actually can't beat that. I rolled good, but I have no bonuses to my insight. No. Oh. So, I got a 15. <laughs> that fucking rots. Boo? Uh, she's playing it straight. Those little blood-sucking creatures who seem to have showed up probably took it. Just glaring. Son of a... Ugh. Is there a problem or shall we be moving on now? Let's get a move on. I don't want to be in this cold fucking hellhole anymore. You, I'm with Boo. Yeah, Boo, I you guess. can brush yourself off, begin to leave. Mira Marchand, <laughs> Serenup Cinderman, Integrity Idleberry, following close behind. And at the back of the pack, the shaky-legged Diana, Architect of Duplicity, uh, follows suit. Um, Boo... As you lead the way, you walk through this hallway, kind of grim about the fact that it was your... your what I think was possession. exactly what I was looking for. Slipped out of my hands. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If only you hadn't succumbed to the gas. Fallen asleep. You know? um, it would have been all yours. If only you hadn't fucked around with Fucking that Fucking stupid desk moron idiot. Maybe you should have stayed awake. <laughs> uh, but, boo... Uh, as you walk into this office room, the one with that damnable desk, you see through a person-shaped hole in the ice of the front door uh, a single, very short attendant kind of sitting down uh, next to the door. They're wearing a wonderful tuxedo uh, chain around their neck. They look to be uh, shivering and freezing, and they look up at in shock at the four of you, and their mouth drops open when they see behind you uh, Diana as well, uh, standing almost at her full height, up, walking out, uh, glowing horns, glowing uh, wings. I'm going to... I'm going to literally, like, lunge and jump at this fucking imp and, like, fucking snatch him up like a fucking prize. (laughs) First and foremost, not an imp, just a dwarf. Oh, just Uh, a dwarf? Anyways, I'm going to tackle this dwarf and fucking snatch him up. Make an athletics check for me. (laughs) Oh, my God. Who is this dwarf? Boo just got up and is tackling people. Who are you? Taking out his aggression. The fucking Sturgis (laughs) stole my coin. I'm so fucking mad. So athletics? (laughs) Athletics, please. Only a 12. Only a 12. Well, Only this a 12. dwarf rolled, uh, this attendant rolled a four. Uh, so <laughs> they, they like try to push themselves onto their feet and you can see their little dress shoes slipping and sliding on this icy floor. You lunge out at them, grab them by their collar and can pick them up. Uh, they're like, <gasps> the, the, the tuxedo uh, and their dress shirt underneath is choking them heavily uh, and the chain is even looser than your grip. Uh, and they're trying to like, <laughs> as you I don't want to choke them like, oh, Oh, sorry, Fucking what do you want to do then? I wanted to just I'm grab sorry. him. You like, grab him his mouth. and you're, you hold him against the wall and he like you smash his head and he goes, oh, please, please, I, I, my mistake. And you see the chain tighten deeply and he goes, I was sent here on behalf of my Lord Fiend to bring you back into the fold. Galvan, you work for Galvan? Is that what, is that what I heard right? Their like, eyes are cloudy and they're like nodding their head. Well, we might have our way to Galvan after all. Hey, that's easy. Do you let them go? I'll let them go, but I want to like keep a strong sort of like grip on their um like their clothes. Absolutely, you can grab onto the suit jacket. They as soon as you let them go, they te- take a deep breath in and they go, "My lord, my lord Galvan was my lord fiend was made aware of your incursion into his office and sent me here to 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 to." to Ooh, ask after Sir Eric. And then he kind of looks around and sees like a foot sticking out from behind the desk and says, oh, but I I won't report that oh, back. I, yeah, I, what's I, left I, of him? I, I, won't, I won't tell him about that. I promise you all, please. He looks at you, Boo, fearful, and he goes, I, I won't tell him. I won't tell him that. Well, if you would be so kind as to take us to him, that would be most appreciated, my good sir. Uh, I can bring you... Yes, I can bring you down the stairs. That's what I was sent here for. Oh, we have a meeting. We've made quite a mess of things up here. It was hard not to ignore downstairs. Yeah, I kind of figured. Well, let's make a bigger one. Come on. 
Deanna is kind of like snarling. Her, her face looks filled with anger, and she'll say before you guys leave, and she'll say, "Is this not a devil himself?" Mm, I'm gonna like tug on the chain a little bit. It, it pulls tighter around his neck, and he goes, <coughs> "No, I have a feeling this is just one of the many little servants that all the fiends have underneath them to do their bidding." I don't think this is actually a fiend. He came to me in forms like that with chains around his neck. I don't think this is our guy because, Diana, it sounds like you're a pretty valuable for Galvan to have. And I think if this was Galvan, from what I know, I don't think he'd be able to resist. She seems to sigh uh, and relent going along with you guys. Uh, All right. Who? Get a move on then. I'm going to pat him, <laughs> pat this dwarf this, on the holding, back and get him to Holding this guy's jacket, moving. you push him through the door. Uh, he stumbles a little bit, uh, trying to like pull the chain a little looser to no avail. This is like Boo's bank robbery. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you walk out, gun in his back, and say, nobody move. Or I'll <laughs> Just take me to the fucking vault. I, uh, yeah, instead of a gun, it's my fucking spear. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, as soon as you walk out through this person-sized door, uh, pers- person-sized, per- person-sized <laughs> hole in this icy door, uh, you guys are at the top of this uh, icy uh, high roller room, and the second you walk out, a dazzling, gleaming, bright light is shining directly at you, yeah. as if you were all being uh, a spotlight shone right into your eyes. Ooh. Ah, it's uh, the paparazzi. Musical number. Let's go. <laughs> uh, you hear there is a very low hum of like uh, some string music in the background, but that is obviously uh, just a kind of like to keep the echo in the room down almost. Uh, Again, Mira, it still sounds mechanical and tinny. But uh, from far down below, the moment you guys step out onto this icy staircase, uh, there's still large footsteps melted into this ice, by the way, so it's a bit precarious. Uh, But far down below, there is a large roulette table, 60 feet in diameter. In the center, a large spindle, a platform, where there is a, or there was a table of imps betting their night away. Nine imps seated with two guards uh, to watch them. You hear from very far down there, there's a little imp. He has orange skin and he has the most spiky little head and face and ears and uh, wings. He calls up, barks up in a voice and says, in a very non-imp-like voice, Visitors! How I welcome you! Why do I have a feeling that this is who we're looking for? Echoes all around the room. And as you guys continue down the steps, the spotlight follows you all the way. This imp, this orange spiky imp, says nothing more as you all make your way down. You can see that the gathered imps in the room have kind of landed for the time being. Uh, There's people sitting at like their private tables uh, who are kind of like looking over as this large commotion is made. Um, Other people seem to be sitting on like lounges and are like legs crossed, drink in hand, waiting for the show of what they know is about to come. Oh God. Um, Do you guys talk, do you guys make any plans as you descend this staircase or are we just gonna free ball it as we go? Quick, right now, is, is anyone super fucked up? Not any more than I already am already. How are how are Integrity and Serenup looking? I'm like fifty percent, let's say. There's yeah. definite cuts and scrapes. The 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 scars of where those little blood sucking creatures came. A bit of like <laughs> caustic burn from the poison. Demon mosquitoes. <laughs> like I still have a fight in me. Um, like I I feel like a like like a 60 70 percent lady, um, <laughs> with just a hand that is turning into stone. Uh, Mira um, is at less than half, and okay. so I think she is just going to, um, uh, I think I'm at a sorcery point, so I can't twin this, which is a shame, but I think Mira is going to cast uh, Cure Wounds just on herself at second okay. level, because she hasn't used any second level spell slots yet, and just recover a few hit points before, okay, before what the... I'm assuming to be Just ask fight. Deanna! Assuming. Just be like, let us suck life out of you, please. I don't want that to happen! Okay, what I'm really worried about happening is Deanna dies before we kill Galvin, so we don't get anything from Horst <laughs> or Deanna. <laughs> Uh, oh right, man, two, what a three, shame. So six plus Damn. five. Okay, I got 11 hit points back. I'm at okay. 41. Wow. <laughs> hey, um, it's better than 30. Uh, Mira, you maybe place a hand to your uh, heart to still the beating thing for a moment, healing yourself as you walk down these stairs. You guys get to, they don't let you get to the floor. You're probably still 30 feet up on these they just push this us. staircase. <laughs> they push you to your death. 30 feet up on this staircase, the roulette wheel is like spinning very idly, almost like someone gave it a spin but didn't put the ball in, right? Uh, It's just like lackadaisically, lazy river style, spinning around. That's creepy. You hear this spiky little imp. You see him put a little elbow on the 
like table behind him, the green felt along it. He rubs his little spiky chin and he'll call out and say, Now what would interlopers such as yourselves be doing with such a fine trophy of mine? Breaking in, killing my own wonderful hellfire knight? Lying to my staff? Lying to the local imps? What kind of person would <laughs> do that to a person they'd never even met? You didn't even have the gall to introduce yourself to me? You snuck around my domain? I don't know, all of that seems pretty par for the course around here. A big smile creeps across the expression. Par for the course. I like your style very much, young patron. I like your eyes better. Why is every fiend? <laughs> every fiend. This one, a little imp, no more than a 11 inches tall. He's not wearing a full tuxedo. He's just wearing the the the, the pants and like some silver suspenders. <laughs> oh, fuck. He lifts himself up so that he's nice plum sitting on the edge of this little card table. And he'll call out to you and say, there's a few ways this can go. S most simply is you give me back what you've taken from me. A trophy and a token of my own excellence. <laughs> The alternative is we could play a game about it. And when you say game, because the thing is, we were just going to kill you. <laughs> the ultimate oh, game simple as of that. life. <laughs> just as easy, just as straightforward. We could do that. We could come to it. You might kill many people in this room before the end, but not Galvan. Not godless Galvan. You won't. We can fight. We can play games. What's the game? We could play a spin of roulette. That would be simple. That would be easy. That would be a big, big bet. You could hand me back my token of excellence, and I'd be willing to extend a more generous offer. And where would be the fun in just giving away a trophy? Is a trophy not meant to just be won in a game of skill? The trophy I can win back. I'm speaking of two separate things, young patron. You've stolen my architect from me, my plaything. You can hear behind you, like, Diana let out, like, a, a very scared-sounding kind of, like, rattle, almost, like, <sighs> like deep breaths. Uh, if, if any of you were to pay attention to her, her posture is much more crouched, almost as if she was trying to hide behind you all now. That fury, that fire from back upstairs seems to have faded now. And Galvan, this little imp, scratches his chin. He goes, what I speak of is a token taken from me, a coin, sitting upstairs in my desk. Hmm, the name escapes me. Patron, young patron, uh, could you remind me the name of it? And he uh, makes eye contact with you, boo. That which you sought in my domain, that which you sought in Lem itself, what brought you this all, this whole way? The so-called fabled twin coin of life and death? Hmm, that's it, that's it. If you were willing to hand it back over to me, a generous offer would be extended in your direction if you wish to play a game. Well, I did have it, but it seems my pockets were emptied when I was taking a nap. So I actually have no idea where it is at this point. A smile, this little orn imp. He goes, look no further than your friend down the stairs. Her pockets are heavy. You didn't. Sorry. I'm going to try and like step forward and like, start shuffling through the pockets. You can try. I'm going to try and stop you. I'm going to try anyways. <laughs> can I like step Absolutely. between them? <laughs> Absolutely. Boo, make an athletics check with disadvantage. Uh, and, and Mira, you can make an acrobatics or athletics with advantage. I'm absolutely so, going like, to make acrobatics because okay. I have a plus 10 to that. Uh, first rule is a 10 plus 10. Second rule is a 13 plus 10, 23. Oh, fuck. Even with that, I only managed to get an 18. An 18. Uh, Mira like shuffles backwards. Integrity and Serenup both step and interpose themselves. You even also feel a hand, a very warm hand that grabs your own wrist, Boo. And a very quiet voice whispers in your ear and says, please save your infighting for after we are out of here. Please, I beg you. I need you and your help. Hey, Boo, when we're not dead, you can try to take it from me then. Let's kill this thing. Okay? Then you can be as mad as you want. Ahem! <laughs> Sorry to interrupt your wonderful conversation. The melodrama unfolding, isn't that right? And he kind of looks around to like the bored, rich looking folks and they a little chuckle 
does emanate around from all of them. The imps find it hilarious. He puts his hands underneath his chin and he goes, Last offer. Throw it down and I'll stack the deck in your favor. I think I'm going to look over to Diana because it seems that our options here are to have a straightforward fight or to play some sort of game. And I'm very curious if she has anything to say about this. Uh, she looks scared, Mira. She's grabbing onto Boo's uh, wrist, fearful. And the fact that he is the only person who openly was immediately ready to go into a fight seems to be hiding mostly behind him. And she looks at you like a deer in the headlights. Mm. Again, all that fire from upstairs, yeah. gone. I'm going to tell you right now, you will not wager that coin. Then let's kill him. I'm going to like sigh very loudly and take yeah, out my trident and just like slam it into the ground and on okay. my side. And I'm just gonna look at the, I'm just gonna look to the others and be like, we we know what has to happen. Hey, no offense, dude, but we've killed things scarier than you. <sighs> just like that, the tension in the room seems to reach a peak and it's as as mira says then let's kill him after this whispered threats back and forth uh you hear the roulette wheel uh below begin to spin uh, in a frenzy incredibly quickly if you were to walk across it uh, you would risk being thrown off or dropped on the ground uh you see many of the imps those gathered especially on that main spindle take to the air eight imps that one orange one remains seated just where he was uh next to him are two very ornamented guards um as Serenup, you draw a fork and enlarge it into a trident at your side, jabbing this, the butt down into the ice, saying this. Boo, you can also pull your pike out in integrity. You can draw a dagger with your careful hand and Mira preparing yourself for battle as well. Uh, the orange imp puts hands behind his head and goes, So plain, so plain, so it be. Let them die. I need you guys to roll initiative, please, and thank all you. All right. Bye. The best way to play is oh. to not play at all. <laughs> Total of seven. seven. Be careful, because they'll have you wager. Like, well, what if I don't fucking do that and just stab him in the face? There you go. Oh, well, that's not good. That's actually Would pretty you? decent. Wait a second. I got an eight. An I got eight. a seven. Okay, great job, team. <laughs> we're, we're so uh, dead. I we're got, so dead. I got a 21. <laughs> we are so absolutely fucked. Absolutely, I'm having a great time. Yes. I got 17. A 17, okay. Perfect. How fucked are we? We're fucked. Uh, it's kind of clustered around, you know. There's the top end, there's the low end. It's it's fine, you know. You're gonna make it. No. Um, first and foremost, one of the guards, Figures. standing atop the roulette's spindle, uh, walks to an edge. He puts a little hand. Th these guards are dressed in very fine green velvet tuxes. Uh, they have burlap sack masks over their heads. Uh, no bell for them. Uh, and they also both have large chains around the neck. Although the, the, the chain doesn't go off into like a magical space. It just kind of dangles, almost as if it was broken. Uh, one of these guards is going to walk forwards. He puts a hand on the little orange imp's uh, shoulder. He leans his head in, and it seems like they have a small hushed conversation. Uh, and then this guard stands up to his full might, a good five foot ten, and it lifts his right hand, and uh, in his hand, uh, Serenup, you are the first to see this, something you're familiar with. Uh, bolts of lightning seem to be conjuring, and he just, uh, almost like a a soldier commanding people to fire arrows. He does like a, a salute kind of thing and three very large, uh, not lightning bolts, but bolts of lightning shoot <laughs> out towards you all. Uh, one of them is going towards uh, you, Boo. One of them is going towards you, in uh, Integrity, and one towards you, Serenepth. Mm -hmm. um, Boo Bolero. This should be fine. Oh, never mind. Oh my God. <laughs> What? Blue Valero does a 19 hit. Uh, <laughs> Damn. Uh, yeah. Uh, Integrity does a 22 hit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Serenip does a 24 hit. Yes. I was like, Okay, wow. well, it's only, I can only pick one of you to actually use this on. I'm going to use my runic shield to protect Serenip. To protect Serenup? Okay. Yeah. Damn, so the, the attacker, if this is an attack roll, they have to re-roll that attack and they have to Perfect. use the new roll. I will do that. Um, the new roll is a 21. Yep. Does that hit? Yep. Okay. It literally uh, did nothing. I mean, luckily, though. If anything luckily, is to hit me, yep. lightning. Yep. Serenup yeah. 
is resistant to lightning due to her okay. heritage. Seraph, you feel as soon as the lightning uh, is conjured in the air, you feel like all of the hackles of your body go up and like the scales begin to glimmer a little bit as the lightning in is infused. You are going to take, uh, I haven't rolled all the damage yet, but you're going to take just 11 lightning damage, Seraph. So have that to five, please. Okay. Uh, Boo, I, uh, one of them glances over your shoulder. Uh, just take five lightning damage. Uh, and Integrity, one of them like hits you uh, and slashes against your cheek. It is almost like moving so fast that the, the actual uh, force of it seems to do more damage than the actual lightning itself. Integrity, just take seven lightning damage. Uh, that is this one's turn. Uh, he uh, almost like brings his other hand up, his left hand, and you see him begin charging up more lightning to shoot uh, on his next turn. Uh, Serenup Cinderman, you go next. Um, The imps that have kind of flown up, how close together are they? If I was to describe it in any dramatic sensation, mm -hmm. I would say they are probably 10 feet above the spindle. Okay. So probably like the same height level as you guys. Mm -hmm. Um. And they are almost like twirling around in what I would say, you know, maybe a halo around the kind of spindle table and those guards gathered. Uh, they're in the air. They're making a little circle uh, and just spinning around in the air. So they're not really attacking us? The imps do not seem to be attacking you, no. Huh. Okay. <laughs> would you like to murder them all? I kind of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to use chain That's what I'm them. talking about. I kind there of want is to use eight use... of them up in the air. I kind of want to use chain lightning on them. That would be pretty Love fucking that. sick. Yeah. Is this the first time you've used chain lightning? No, right? I think so. This is the gag. Yes. Like every other time, oh, it's only been like one person that we're fighting, so it doesn't make yeah. sense. Yeah. So, uh, so would you like to chain lightning? <laughs> I would. Yeah, I'd like to just hit them all. Basically, yes. Uh, fair enough. Could you could you first describe for us what it looks like as fair enough? Cast chain lightning, uh, and then you can read us the spell description. Okay. It's. It looks pretty similar to when she's about to cast lightning bolt, where it like she kind of like raises like her finger up and it looks like, but it looks like like she's about to just do. Like, I don't even know what the word is for this. A finger, but then, finger oh. gun. Yeah, finger gun. But then as she raises her hand, she then raises two more fingers. Other finger. <laughs> nice. And it, like, it just like starts building to yeah. kind of like where kind of like the light just kind of engulfs her hand, and then it just kind of makes a loud crackling noise and just shoots out. Like it arcs like out a, towards the nearest. Imp. Yeah. Um. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I read the description. This is pretty intense. Thank this you. Is pretty wild. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Could you go ahead and tell us what the spell does, Saren of the Cinnamon, as uh, this lashes out? I believe I have to make dexterity saving throws. You do, uh, but yes. Read, go so, ahead and read. You create a bolt of lightning that arcs towards a target of your choice that you can see within range. Three <laughs> bolts then leap from that target to as many as three other targets, each yep. of which must be within 30 feet of the first target. The target can be a creature or an object that can be targeted by only one of the bolts. And then yep. the target must and make a dexterity <laughs> saving throw. The target takes uh, 10d8 lightning 10 damage D8. on a failed save and half as much <laughs> damage on a successful one. That's insane. Oh my god. Okay, Thank you. so I, you're going to target one of the imps, the closest imp to you, mm -hmm. regardless of anything. Um, or are you going to target someone, a, a specific imp, like the little orange pointy imp? Cause, yeah, because if I do hit, if I hit him, then it can kind of just hit the other two, and then go up. Yes, I think that's gonna be that's turn. honestly gonna be probably the best thing. Because again, like you mentioned, the okay. imp, those imps aren't really fighting us by all means. So yeah, uh, so you target the the pointy imp Galvan by all means. Yeah. Um, let's go through it. Uh, we have a big, we have the full spectrum, folks. Uh, mm -hmm. let's go through the gamut. We've got a one. We've uh -huh. got a six. Uh -huh. We've got an eleven, uh -huh. and we've got a natural twenty. Damn. Oh. So um, three of them get hit pretty bad, and one of them get three of them kinda get hurt. pretty bad. One of them still is gonna take a maximum like a ton of damage. Yep. This is still ten D eight damage. Ton of damage. Uh, so let me just like, you know. Ten D eight is a weird way to say eighteen. Five. <laughs> what the fuck? What? <laughs> I need stupid. There we go. As as Sarah casts the spell, as the lightning uh arcs from imp from from the pointed uh, galvan imp and then it shoots up in a triplet of uh, arcing uh up to like three indeterminate of the like uh gathered imps the the kind of like the imp crew um it kind of the, the others kind of like jaws drop open in shock in horror uh you hear names uh, yelled out uh, friends seeing their own, own uh, disintegrated into dust in front of them uh, you hear names such as Dormby. Oh, flop it! No, <laughs> flop it! <laughs> Scarny. Uh, these types of things uh, yelled yelled out in fear. She's 
<laughs> for their own mortality. Oh, this God. is what I imagine it's like to be in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh no! I rolled really okay. I rolled. I'm so excited. Very well with this. The final Uh-oh. total is 62. Holy 62. fuck! Excellent. Thank you. So Thank three you. imps will be taking 62 damage. One imp will be taking 31 damage. Sarah Cinnamon, you see every single imp, starting with the pointed imp, Galvan. It's Galvan. Yeah. You see him disintegrate into dust as the first arc of this lightning hits him and kills him. I don't trust Sarah, that. You see a small cloud of red mist emerge from his body and begin to float over towards you. You then see the lightning arc to three other of three of these other imps. They yell out, the friends yell out their name as they also disintegrate into nothingness. Red mist comes from their body and flies over towards you. Sarah Cinderman, yeah. please regain uh 20 HP for every imp you just killed, which is huh? what? four of them. Oh, so please, okay. for me, regain 80 HP as these uh, yes. misty red clouds uh, flow back to you and they almost like push through your skin. You feel revitalized. You feel refreshed. You feel as though you just got a nice blood transfer. Do I also get temp uh, HP from this or is no, it just up to max? No, it? just to max. Um, I don't like Which this. I believe brings you perfectly to max. Oh, perfect. Um, I'm possessed now. Wonderful. <laughs> you hear... As, like, these imps die, uh, people in the crowd, because there's a gathered crowd here, g- gasp in shock, and you hear some, one, some of the imps go like, Oh my god, they killed Galvan, like, immediately! Uh, behind you, you hear, like, a, like an anticipatory, like, um, breath from your good pal, Diana. I'm going to look to her immediately and be like, I didn't know, I d- I'm so sorry, I didn't know that that would be so fast. You hear from another imp's voice, one of the ones that's now flowing around in this kind of like uh, halo of impy flesh. Uh, You hear a voice that calls out and says, man, that was a really close one. You're playing fast and loose with these. You, the four of you didn't really come here to mess around, did you? As you hear Galavan's voice now coming from a different Mm -hmm. imp. Uh, It is a perfectly white imp and he has tons of blue tattoos all over his body. He's wearing just the suit jacket. He's probably a pair with the other orange pointy imp. Mm. Um, but you hear the voice emanating from his body now, calling out to you, taunting. You even might see Serenip, he like wiggles his hands and goes, don't miss me next time, okay? Make sure to take me out. I give him the middle and finger. And he winks at you. You give him the middle finger. Is there anything else for your turn? Um, I would like to move down the stairs a little bit more. Absolutely. You can get all the way to the bottom of the stairs to the floor. Sick. If you would like. Yeah, sure. Perfect. Uh, integrity, I Idlebear, you're 30 feet up the stairs. What would you like to do? Um, so where in, um, mm-hmm. like, space-wise is yes. this new imp? Uh, the new imp is kind of, like, 10 feet above, like, diagonally away from the spindle. Again, they're, like, in a little halo. They're rotating just as fast as the roulette wheel is spinning. Um, the spindle of the wheel is, like, 30-ish feet away from you as well, um, where, like, the table that the imps were playing at was. So there's two guards standing there. The imps are up in, yeah. like, a little uh, floaty uh, halo. What would you like to do? Okay. And he's in... He's one of those in the halo. Yes, correct. A, a white imp with blue tattoos and only a suit jacket. Okay. Um, I can't wait for his final form where he wears like a full proper suit. <laughs> that was the puzzle. You had to kill the one with the full suit. <laughs> mm, let's try to do this just like before um, before we get all hot and heavy on this, um, on this imp. Like I'm yeah. not going to put everything out just yet. Okay. Um... Since I'm far away, I'm mm-hmm. going to first cast Toll the Dead against it. Ooh, okay. Targeting the one who is speaking Galavan's voice, yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, what um, do I have to do? As the loud bell rings out in this uh, amphitheater of a sort, uh, what can I save? Um, it's a wisdom save. A wisdom saving throw. That is going to be a, unfortunately, a 16. Ah, okay. Yeah, that saves... Um, okay. So it doesn't really do anything, but I would like to jump down onto the roulette wheel. Yes. Okay. I would like to jump down into the Perfect. roulette wheel. There is a staircase like at the center spindle, so you only need to make it to the center, and then you can climb up and be uh, at them. Um, as you jump down, integrity, uh, you fall like the thirty feet. You will be taking damage for that. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. Um, it is not that much damage. It's only six damage bludgeoning. As you land, you hear like a crunch in your ankle that is not super nice. Um, and you are now uh, on like the external uh, border of the roulette wheel as it is spinning quite fast. Could you make a dexterity saving throw for me to stay uh, on your feet? 
That is a 25. 25. Uh, this thing is spinning. Integrity, you just stay like kneeled down uh, close to the ground. It is spinning quite fast, but you are no uh, stranger to these kind of things. You keep your footing and are able to uh, make your move uh, next turn if you would like. Or you could bonus action dash, honestly. Uh, or just move, use your movement at all. You just dropped, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll bonus action um, to move up closer. Okay. Which will put me on the um roulette. um you still have all of your movement because you fell off a ledge i'm not going to count that as you moving uh so you could just use your regular movement run the 30 feet across this roulette board as it spins mm-hmm. underfoot um you yes. maintain your balance you reach the staircase you can bonus action and dash as your cunning action up this staircase if you would like to okay i think um i'm just going to stay in the staircase okay. i i want to stay close downstairs to the roulette because okay. i'm sort of wanting inviting him into the roulette table mm, okay so like you stay more... you, you run to the center of the roulette table you stand yeah. right out the part that's not it's spinning anymore where there's just a staircase leading up uh mm-hmm. made of brass and you stand there waiting perfect uh up next is boo bolero what would you like to do my friend there's okay. imps of, uh, there's imps galore uh there's guards as well hmm makes me wonder so Obviously, there's a disembodied voice of Galvan just, like, coming from another imp. It's not disembodied at all. It's coming from this other little white imp with blue tattoos. He's saying it out loud. As you look at him, he goes, he he does, like, a little hand gesture, like, come here. He's actually doing Uh, ventilation. Is he Italian? (laughs) He's Italian. (laughs) Come here. Uh, Boo. Well, now he has to die. Is there any way that I can get close to any other imps? Um, You could... If you made a really good athletics check and jumped through the air, you could probably jump... And at the apex, like, spike one of them with your uh, pike if you want to. You would then fall to the ground, however. Mm, If you had any magics to fly, it would be quite simple. (laughs) No. (laughs) Um, I'm just thinking, because, like, what if we just take care of all the other imps first instead of Galvan so that he can't get away? Mm. Yeah, maybe. Are there... How close are any of the guards? Uh, The two guards are still on that center spindle, 30 feet away as the crow flies. Okay, I think I'm going to go take care of the um, the okay. guards first because they are kind of the immediate threat that I can reach right now. Okay. Uh, How do you get there? Are you going to follow in Integrity's footsteps, drop down off the ledge, and run across the roulette board? Sure. But before I do that, I'm going to use a bonus action to embiggen myself. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, Using runic, my giant strength. Uh, runic energy emanates from you. You grow in stature and size. A uh, very big man now. Um, uh, large, some might say. What, like 12 feet tall, perhaps? I guess, yes. Yeah. I am te- can, whatever large would be. Let's say eight feet. You're the same height as Diana. You okay. uh, can drop off this staircase down below. Uh, you're also going to be taking fall damage. Um, that is going to be five bludgeoning damage. Uh, and now you are standing on the roulette table. Do you want to run the 30 feet across? Sure. Okay. As you do so, can you make a dexterity saving throw for me? Dexterity? Oh, no. You're great at that, aren't you? No, I rolled a that one. No. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you all see Boo grow in stature, huffing and puffing, pulling out his pike and ready to be done with this. Uh, he drops off this ledge, lands. You hear a crunch, and then you see his feet give out underway as he just, like, it hits the floor and you just be see, you see him spinning around and around <laughs> like a horrible carousel that's gone off the the rails. Oh my God. Uh, Boo, you're prone. Uh, you can get up next turn uh, or you could waste your movement now and stand up. I'm not going to... And then next turn, you also get knocked to the ground again. No. <laughs> no? No. Okay. You could crawl if you would like. Yeah, but then I'm going to be taking an advantage if they get closer. <laughs> so no, I'm not going to move. Okay, by all means, you stand here at the ex- the, per- the 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 uh, furthest away extreme on the roulette wheel. You're on like the number one as well. Just so unlucky. Great. Um, up next is Mira Marchand. Your friends have abandoned you. You are standing. Diana's right behind you. What do you want to do? Um, sorry. Remind me one more time. How how big is yep. this like imp cloud? Uh, the imp cloud is like twenty foot diameter. Great. I think I'm gonna stay where I am because I I. I don't know how well I can actually protect Diana, but I think I can do moderately okay. I'm going to target the imp cloud with a uh, synaptic static, I think. Okay. So, what I think I am basically going to do is, I like this idea that like I'm essentially playing a note that is 
such a high register that only imps can like hear and be wounded by it. Like almost as if <laughs> like, I am as if they were dogs. Yeah, they like I'm dogs. targeting. <laughs> yeah, like I'm targeting the mosquito sound right there. To, okay, to make their heads. <laughs> Metaphorically, maybe literally okay. explode. I believe they all need to make intelligence saving throws. That is correct. DC 19. Oh, that's so high for these little imps. Thanks for the spell weave liar. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, for your awareness, imps have a plus zero to their intelligence. Uh, and this is a 20 foot radius? 20 foot sphere. Yeah. Within 120 Shit, feet. That's, so, that's all of the remaining imps. Yes. Destroy them. Well, let's see. So there's five remaining. I'll make yep. an individual save for every single one of them because I love them so dearly. Um... I see, I see. <laughs> um, the highest here, we have two threes, a four, a six, and an 18. All right, none of those save. So let me grab my uh, 8d6 of uh, psychic damage that's going to be done. And if any of them survive, uh, you're going to have to be subtracting a d6 from all of their rolls. Uh, sorry, not all their rolls, their attack rolls, their ability checks, and their con saves for the next one minute. <laughs> Of course, so I'll keep track of that. One, two, three, four, five, six, um, seven, eight. Okay, let me, two of those are ones and two of those are twos, so you may be in luck. Let me okay. add that all together. That's shocked. not that much damage, unless I did it wrong. That's only 22 points of damage. Of 22? Damage. I think so. Here, I'm going to do it one more time just to make sure. Yeah, that's only 22 points of psychic damage. 22 points of damage. This piercing note only audible to imp kind rings out in this arena all the observers are like is she even playing music and then you see all the imps <laughs> writhing on the ground those not in the radius but still being able to hear this horrific uh vo construction you've made mira you see the halo spinning ring of happy looking imps uh they all shudder, blood starts to run from their noses and their ears. They clutch Jeez. their heads in fear and pain as they all hold on with a whopping two, count them, two hit points. <laughs> Damn. Um, Mira, they're going to be making everything. Sorry, I didn't listen. I didn't expect them to live. Uh, everything with disadvantage? Uh, no. So they are, for the next minute, they're going to be rolling a D6 and subtracting that number from all of their attack rolls and ability checks as well as Christ. their con saves. Okay, sounds good. And, uh, uh uh, they can make an int save at the end of their turns to try to end that effect on themselves. Perfect. Uh, is that it for your turn? Yes, or it is. Just, okay, I'm staying perfect. where I am, and I believe I'm out of Bardic Inspirations. Oh, Dan, that's. I sucks. think. Um, I might have two left. I, I just have <laughs> shit writing, and this is completely on me. I either have two okay. left or none left. <laughs> okay, in that case... Uh, I'm going to operate uh, under the assumption that I'm out. And that, So you don't want to move or anything? That's the end no, of your I turn? want to stay. I want to be at I'll least at one person point. near Diana. Okay. Um, as you stand here, are, uh, do you make that clear that you're going to stay ne near her? Because she is moving next. And unless you stop her, she looks to be uh, like she's going to be moving away from you. Mm, fair enough. Uh, can I just like ask her? Can I just be like, hey, yes? I'll stick with you. Where are we going? Down the stairs. She says, <laughs> a voice kind of cracking, uh, confidence kind of waning, uh, chisel in hand, uh, altogether looking like a possible very brutal murder weapon. Um, okay, we're not going to die. Let's go. And Mira is going to descend the stairs. You, you scoot down the stairs. Uh, she follows after you, uh, legs shaky and kind of like holding on to you for support as you do uh, make it to the bottom floor. That is it for her turn. That is all she's going to do. <laughs> uh, up next is going to be uh, the other guard atop the spindle. Uh, he walks to the edge and looks down at you, Integrity Idleberry. He looks over at Boo, who's spinning Whee! like a child <laughs> who slipped on a merry-go-round. Uh, and he's going to, in a similar move to what you did, Integrity, just drop off. He's not going to use the stairs. He's going to drop and try to land behind you. And you see in either one of his hands... Uh, conjure. It, it, it's not in his hands so much as his hands uh, turn to giant blocks of ice almost, and he like two large mauls uh, in each hand, and he, he's going to try to drop onto you and uh, crack you over the back with those. Um, he's also going to take damage for it. Uh, ooh! Uh, a 12 misses, uh, but does a 28 hit? Uh, yes, that I'm does going to hit. use my reaction. Oh, I'm going okay. to use my runic shield. Oh, okay. Reroll uh, that attack, bitch. <laughs> Uh, integrity, uh, a large giant rune appears above you, uh, blocking the, one of these icy malls uh, for a moment. Uh, does a 28 hit? 
fuck's it's sake. Uh, and then but... his left hand breaks through it and smashes down upon so you. So useless. What would you like to do to take the idol very? Um, would I be able to react um, against that? Just like you dodge. Absolutely would. Yeah. Just because uh, yeah, I absolutely. can Uncanny see what dodge. he's doing. Yeah. So that's going to half the Have the attack. damage. Absolutely you can do that. You uh, as right the runic shield that Boo conjures above your head gives you just enough, like the ample amount of time to react perfectly. Uh, and instead of this cracking down over the back of your head, it like is a glancing blow, shoulder, maybe knee, as you like uh, push yourself onto the stairs out of the way uh, and then can stand up before he gets his feet back under him. Um, that is, oh, sorry, wrong page. That would have been horrific if I ruled that. That was like 17d6. Uh, Integrity Idleberry. You will be taking five bludgeoning damage from the hammer, uh, and then an additional twelve cold damage from it. Uh, so that's uh, what five plus twelve, seventeen. Seventeen. Uh, yeah. So uh, just take eight damage altogether uh, as this hammer lands a glancing blow against you. Um, uh, that is it for his turn as he used his multi attack, uh, and this this burlap sack is kind of like pulled tight against the face, and you can just see like very bulbous looking structure underneath the hood. There's no like hints of a face or eyebrows, a nose, anything under it. It's just kind of like a lumpy uh, piece of flesh, it seems, that the burlap sack is uh, concealing. Ah, uh, up next is going to be the other guard, the one who had put a, their left hand in the air. Uh, he begins to conjure more lightning in his hand, uh, and he's going to, looking between you, Mira Marchand, and you, Serenap Cinderman, uh, the one who, the ones who are killing all the imps, and he's going to say, ah, I apologize, I misspoke. He doesn't say nothing. Uh, a hushed kind of gurgly sound comes from underneath this mask. Uh, and then two bolts of lightning are shooting out at you, Serenap the Cinderman, and one is shooting out at you, uh, Mira Marchand. And is that minus the d6? I can subtract a d6 for you. <laughs> I have like a stupidly low AC, so, you know, I'm Mira sure. Mira Marchand does a 13 hit 13 you. is exactly what you needed, so yes, it Holy does. Damn, that shit. sucks, because that's the lowest roll of the bunch. Um, Sarah Neth Cinnamon does a 27 hit you, yeah. uh, and does a 24 hit you. Yes. We're so okay. fucked. Listen, he gave you an option, you know? So, Mira Marchand, oh shit, that's max damage. Okay. Uh, you'll be taking, tw it's not It's not a bunch, it's just a little. 12 lightning damage okay. uh, as a bolt streaks through and like stabs into like your collarbone. Okay. Um, you can feel like the ringing along your entire skeleton. As for you, Serenap Cinderman, not so bad damage and you are resistant. Uh, Serenap Cinderman, it's only going to be 11 damage total to you, lightning. Uh, have that to five due to your resistance. And this imp, uh, or not this imp, this guard uh, lowers the left hand, raises the right one, and c seems to be conjuring another barrage of lightning. Uh, up next is Serenap Cinderman. You're at the bottom of the stairs. Around you are Diana and Mira as well. What do you want to do? You're all just shot with lightning. I, knowing what this guy seems to do and how how he's targeting us, I want to try and put myself in like direct line so that mm -hmm. he won't hit anyone else but me, if okay. that makes sense, because I'm resistant. It makes yeah. sense to okay. kind of cover you can them. try to do that. You can give half cover to Mira at best, okay. which is just going to raise her AC just a slightly amount. If I do right? something though. Yes. Hey, um, if, if my AC had been that lightning would not have hit me, 15, so. 15, it makes the difference. A plus two makes a difference. Uh, so you move, p position yourself just on the board, edge of the roulette board, just so that your toes aren't touching that spinning, uh, horrific uh, <laughs> machination of metal uh, yeah, and positioning yourself so that Mira is behind you. Uh, what do you want to do for your turn? Um, I'm going to I'm gonna let Mira know what my, my plan is here. Like, I'm going, because he's just throwing lightning. I'm fine if I get hit by lightning. I'm, I'm going to try and keep it in front of you guys cover as much as possible and i'm going to um how many imps are still flying around up there still yeah, there's five imps and they all look to be dazed and confused uh, almost like birds who have been struck with tennis rackets okay so what i'm going to do in that case is i'm going to elemental change scorching ray uh do it at level four so i hit so i shoot out perfect. five exactly perfect and okay. i'm gonna hit them all by all That's means uh, make your five discreet attack rolls <laughs> against these poor, poor little imps. I feel no empathy towards them. Okay, here we go. They're all adorable in their own discreet they ways. They should all die That's a horrible a death. <laughs> Jeez. That's a 22. Okay. That is a 23. Yeah. <laughs> that is a 26. 26 hits. 
uh, that one is, that one's only a seven, uh, sorry, no, no, sorry. That's a 15. A 15, absolutely, yeah. Oh, shit, really? really? <laughs> um, that is a 25. 25 destroys that imp, yes. How many did I just, number? That, that was four, right? Uh, I believe that was four. Okay, one more. That's a natural 20. A natural 20 annihilates this imp. He turns to nothingness. He had never existed. Uh, <laughs> there's imps in frilly little dresses. There's imps in long johns. There's imps in a, ha- a silly little hat and like uh, slacks. Uh, and all of them, Serenap Cinderman, as you're rolling, I believe, 2d6 for each of these hits. Yes. Okay, I'm not even going to make you roll yeah. because they only have 2 HP left. The minimum damage you can do murders all of these imps. Uh, again, please regain 100 HP, please and thank you, as little clouds of misted imp flow back back towards you, uh, staring up the hog and all the Kool-Aid jammers. Sorry. Um, as the imps die, like f- this little fiery bead like shoots around, cuts through them, and uh, they individually, all very quickly, in rapid succession, uh, die, their bodies falling down onto the roulette table. One of them like lands on you, Boo, and just flops off you. <laughs> Uh, Ow! Like a, 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 a car hitting a pigeon. And in this moment, uh, Integrity, the guard who's in front of you, uh, almost doubles over in pain. Uh, and Mira Marchand and Serenap Cinderman, you can see the guard who had been kind of like conjuring the lightning. The one still standing by that uh, poker table up top mm-hmm. um, seems to as well double over. You can see both of them. Their bodies are like shaking. Integrity, you can see this first hand. It looks like something is growing underneath those green velvet suits and burlap sacks their bodies are writhing it is like shaking almost um convulsing in front of you uh, the one up top almost mm-hmm. like his back snaps backwards almost like he bends in half backwards his oh. head like touching it's like smashing into that poker table uh and you see in front of you, Integrity Idleberry, this person in front of you almost like is liquefying before your very eyes. Ew. You can uh-huh. see not flesh melting out through his pant legs and like the sleeves, but little eyeballs just falling everywhere onto the ground. And they are not rolling out at, onto the roulette table. They are almost like rolling up uh, the spindle, up the staircase itself. You can all see mm. uh, the, a very similar scene that all this, the, on the on the poker table up top, it's eyeballs roll out, almost like billiards bouncing around on the green velvet surface. And all these eyeballs seem to be almost by magnets pulled together towards one another up onto the top of this spindle. Integrity, you look on in horror as like eyeballs roll past your feet. Um, A myriad different kinds. It is not just a singular style. Uh, And Mira Uh Marchand and Serenap Cinderman, you, you can see with concrete accuracy a strange form begin to uh, shape itself out of these eyeballs two very almost like bird-like legs begin to support this creature a long tail like that of an alligator although the coloration of these things is this steely blue um, very metallic looking substance uh, like a carapace of sorts uh, Mm -hmm. an armored exterior like that of a beetle almost Um, and then it supports just a mound of wiggling writhing eyes Uh, three arms sprout out one from the front where a stomach or a belly button would be and two from the sides where normal arms would be and then a very uh, non-distinct head kind of shape takes form it almost looks like that of an alligator or something of the sort although it is covered entirely in myriad varieties and styles of eyeballs Um, as this thing takes shape in front of you uh, you hear like a a horrified gasping coming from like the gathered crowd here Um, and there seems to in this moment this kind of transformation elicits a large panic as people throw their drinks down and begin to make running for the door. The final thing that happens is from the kind of icy surface of this room, as people start to run towards the door, uh, almost like spires or like spears of ice jut out and start to uh, stab at mostly imps is what it seems like the the just regular customer imps who are running for their lives mm-hmm. uh, it spears them out of the air that kind of like red mist effect that was happening to snare up you see these probably 10 probably 15 clouds as imps are killed on mass fly towards this eyeball creature in the center of the room its eyes looking around all about it as it seems to be growing ever more as more of these misty clouds come and merge with its being 
And it will turn to you, Serenap Cinderman, as much as you can tell its face is looking towards you and will say, I should have taken you a bit more seriously. It seems I haven't lived in this form in oh so long, but I suppose it's what I need to be to get this done with. Uh, and like as it screams, as this voice echoes out into the crowd itself, we're going to end the episode there. Fuck. <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, ben, could you please give me an outro, please? And thank you. I see you, listeners. <laughs> thank you for listening to this episode of Trials and Trebuchets. I hope you enjoyed it. It's very unsettling, to say the least. We got a bit spooky with it, yeah. Yeah, we got a little bit uh, spooky with it. If you did, please leave a review and a rating on our Apple podcast page or wherever you get your podcast of choice. Uh, we love to hear from you, and we don't really yeah. get any advertising for the show, so That's word true. of mouth is how it gets around. So do your part and share it with do your friends your and family if you'd like. Yeah. We also have a link to our social media page uh, at mm -hmm. Instagram, at Trials and Trebs. Yes. There you can check out a lot of cool upcoming uh, teasers for episodes. Mm -hmm. If you do make fan art, please tag please us. Tag us. We fucking it's love so to fun. see it. It makes it's our great. day. We love yeah. all the amazing fan art that we like get all the time. Mm -hmm. It's just great. We love it. Yeah, it's just wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> if you're feeling a little extra generous, we also have yes. uh, a Patreon page. We have a variety of different yes. tiers that you can subscribe to, and you get a lot of extra goodies such as DM notes, <laughs> bloopers. Bloopers. There's also an opportunity to have a student NPC show up on the show, or there just is. an NPC in general. NPC in general makes it so much easier, folks. It makes it so <laughs> much easier. Yes, did you know that Diana is actually a Patreon NPC? <laughs> <laughs> that would be so sick, though. <laughs> and not only do we have a Patreon, but we have another way that you can support us, what? and it's called merch. merch. Oh my god! I didn't merch. Know. A lot what of physical, a lot of physical goods that have the Trials of Trebuchet's this. brand, like a T-shirt. <gasps> And some we stickers. knew that if we tried to pitch it to you, you'd never allow it. <laughs> <laughs> if, yeah, where can you find that? Uh, we can find it at uh, www.trebmerch.com. Wowzer. Right. I'm putting the hyperlink right here. <laughs> um, thank you, everyone. For There's also a Discord. Yeah, there's uh, also thank Discord. you, everyone, for listening to this week. I hope that it wasn't too yucky to your tummies, uh, but I had a lot of fun. It was fucking fun. Uh, until next week. For our second ever two-parter fight. Uh, see you later, folks. Bye. 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 Bye.